All right. Star Trek, Star Trek, gender identity and sexual identity and the way that you should respect those people. I believe that it should be treated like the Prime Directive with some edits that are under construction right now. I'll, I'll do some of them in this video. The Prime Directive is one of many guidelines for Starfleet's and my family's mandate to explore the galaxy and seek out new life and civilizations or to procreate fall in love or figure out what the future of our species looks like. Mm -hmm. Although the concept of the prime directive has been alluded to and paraphrased by many Star Trek characters during the television series and feature films, the actual directive have, has never been provided to viewers. And I was like, oh man, somebody should write it. The most complete attempts attempt to define the directive have come from non-canonical works and include, uh, let's see here. And then this is a picture of me editing the Wikipedia. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, um, the prime directive prohibits Starfleet personnel and spacecraft, parents, cousins, aunts, friends from interfering in the normal development of any society, person, or teenager. And mandates that any Starfleet vessel or crew member is expendable to prevent a violation of this rule. Uh, this part's the funny part where it's like saying like, um, in my family, if I violated and interfered in your love life, then they can kill me or I can be left alone on the island or the planet. Okay. It's kind of funny, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. And as the right of each sentient or sentient species to live in accordance with this normal cultural evolution is considered sacred, no Starfleet personnel may interfere with the normal and healthy development of alien life and culture or someone's love life. All right. So real quick here, some vocabulary. Sentient, sentient means you know that you are alive. Um, you're intelligent. You know that you're a living being. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like there are lots of debates there where if there's a robot that says, Hey, I'm real, I'm alive. I, I'm a thing. Then that becomes a sentient species in, a, in the debate. Clear? Mm, yes. It's, it's kind of cool and it's kind of hardcore, right? Okay. Uh, sacred is really nice. The first part of the sentence I find to be very beautifully written, honestly, you know, um, it, it's that I believe that as the right of each human being to live in accordance with this normal cultural evolution is considered sacred. Make sense? So what sacred means? Oh, okay. Sacred. Sacred is holy, but there's a bigger idea connected to it. It's like, I'm going to give you a horrible example. Okay. Imagine being at the temple at a funeral. Okay. All right. Yes. And the person's body is considered sacred, right? So like if you go up and like you push the box down, it's like bad, so bad, okay? okay? Because it's sacred, right? So like it's the same idea. Imagine if that box is your your gender or cultural development and then like I obscenely interfere in that development then that means that I've messed with something that's sacred is what this li these lines mean to me. Okay. Okay. Clear. It, it's pretty cool. Right. Like it's a good start. It's like, I would say it's a good starting point. Yeah. No? Okay. No Starfleet personnel, no family member, no friend, no, no rapist. All right. May interfere with the normal and healthy development of my family member, my loved one, or people I care about. Um, it should be everyone though, honestly. Um, but you know, it's, it's that I can, I can speak for the, uh, speak for what I can do. Such interference includes introducing superior knowledge, strength, or technology to a world whose society is incapable of handling such advantages wisely, uh, so, whose society or whose person is incapable, right? So like superior knowledge here would be introducing Tinder to a 10 year old. You know what I mean? Yes. Strength. Strength would be, God, these examples are horrible. I'm sorry. But like strength would be like a person who owns a company that has like escorts and ladies and people they send out and then 
his son is taught in that place about mm -hmm. like sex and all that. And that's, that's just not good. Right. That's, that's just too much power and too much other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Okay. Technology. You can start imagining. I don't think I have to mention it. Fair. Yes. Okay. All right. Starfleet place personnel, my family, um, and the people involved in my, per my child's life, like teachers, for example, may not violate this prime directive even to save their lives and or their ship uh, or their their life or their job or their money or yeah lots of things there you see you see yes mm -hmm. okay unless they are acting to a right to write an earlier violation or accidentally accidental contamination of said culture this is where it gets a little bit sticky like on the funny side here it's that you know you think of time travel stories where somebody tried to fix something in the past and then they ended up causing a bunch of problems you know yes all right so this in the law here and the of the prime directive is that you know they can go back and try to fix it uh, <laughs> but that's that's because it's a story and it was a movie and tv show okay um in, in real life here i would say like once you messed with it that that kind of uh forfeits your right to to do anything more do you know the word forfeit yes okay and and i'll just describe it real quick it's like in this case it would be you know, I just don't have a right anymore. I don't, I, I don't right. have. Yeah, like, well, it's restricting yourself. It's like, you know, I don't think that I'm the right person for this. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and I, I do that all the time where it's like, there's something happening in front of me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't think I'm the right person for this, you know? Um, and that's part of saying no. But you have to balance it with like, you know, trying to help. Fair? Yes. Okay. All right. The direct this directive takes precedence over any and all other considerations and carries it with the highest moral obligation. Um, this is where it starts to become way more than a joke, right? Like it, it and it's debatable. Uh, it, it's it's tough. Like okay, like the reason that it's so sticky on this one, this last sentence for me, is that not everybody believes that love is the highest moral obligation you know and that's where not everybody will agree fair yes and then the other thing i'll add to that is going to be timing you know uh the person who says that love is the most important thing in the beginning will not say that later um for me i'll try to say that it's important like for every breath that you take on this planet uh, and try you know but it just it, it gets really debatable fair yes and I, i'm not just i'm not i guess i'm just old and complaining here i, I wish it wasn't debatable but um, it's okay it's it's that it's there there's just so many layers to it and that's fine okay Okay. All right. Um, this is all just kind of some verbiage on, uh, you know, like the, the detail where it's like people who are less developed. For, but for our analogy here, it's, it's fine. You get the idea. Um, it's not a bad analogy, though, eh? It's not a bad analogy. All right. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. There, let me close this.